Konnichiwa y'all and welcome to another Tenant 10. Today is a Tenant 10 for September 28th, another Thursday one, September 28th of 2023. Hope y'all are hyped. I'm Matt and I'm rolling in with the Oklahoma. Woo, I got Matt, my brother from another mother. We're excited about today. We always try to bring the heat on these Tenant 10s. Uh, we got some killer plants out here today. And we're always, every single week, trying to come up with the best plants we could possibly put out for you guys, because we know everybody goes crazy on those Tenant tens. So sign up for the weekly email so you get the whole list. All right, y'all, I hope you're enjoying Buckholtz Week. We've been dropping some crazy content. If you missed out already, it's hashtag Buckholtz Week. Hashtag. Forget about Shark Week. Today is Gardener's Paradise. Yes. Stay tuned all week for special announcements, crazy things, videos dropping on plants you've never seen, highlights of original trees, walkthroughs of the Buckholtz Garden, top five most outrageous plants. It Dude, just keeps coming. It's, it's insane, man. And that's why we're always trying to encourage you guys to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell so that you're notified because we're dropping all kinds of crazy, crazy videos just for you guys to enjoy. So make sure you sign up for that. Hey, if we did well, smack that bell. Let's get into this tent tent. What, what do we got down there on your side, bro? All right, let's start it out, man. We got Acer, Paul Madum, Pung Kill. Oh man, Pung Kill is a really nice Leonard Loblum Japanese maple. This is a fun one. Dark foliage, yeah. nice growth rate, really good size, excellent size this time of year. I keep telling everybody, fall is a great Dude, time to pick up plants. this is the best time of the year. As, as somebody has shopped with Mr. Maple for a long time, I always like this time of the year because I know all the plants have had some good time out there in the greenhouses, continuously growing. We've got some great sizes on these punk hills. This is a great plant if you want to add some unique texture to your garden. Right. I mean, this really just brings that different appeal. I mean, it does stands out against everything else. I've got this in my garden. I've got it paired with a yellow thread. Ooh, that's a perfect pairing. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting one. I, I, it's one of the darkest lunar lobulums. I love lunar lobulums. They give you that bamboo-like aesthetic in the garden. I think they're like the quintessential Asian gardening plants. It gives Absolutely. you everything you love about that peaceful, relaxing garden but with a Japanese maple. So you get that three to four seasons of beauty where bamboo, you get that kind of invasive uh, growth to them. Right. You're gonna get everything you love about a Japanese maple, but that still airy, open Asian feel to the garden. I don't know if there's anything more relaxing than just like watching a little lobe and blow in the wind. That's like, <laughs> that's like as peaceful as it gets. Absolutely, man. This is a nice grower tier, getting about six to eight feet in 10 years. So kind of a medium sized tree. You fit that in a lot of great spaces in your garden. Uh, but yeah, that dark, dark red color that this thing leaves out, it's really, really nice in the spring. And then in the fall, you get some oranges and reds too. So. Uh, pair it with anything, guys. I love the dark color on this one. It, it's really, really brings it for the color. All right, y'all, we are bringing back another Makawa type. One everybody likes, but we wanted to bring it back to the table. We've got Catalina Yatsubusa. I mean, everybody goes crazy for the Makawa types, especially those collectors out there. You got to have the whole collection, right? Well, you got to get a Catalina Yatsubusa. This is an amazing, super dwarf, uh, variegated Japanese maple. I mean, I love how every leaf is a little bit different on that. Right. I mean, it, it's really striking when you look at each different leaf on that. Throw this one in a container, put it in your conifer garden, put it amongst other maples. It really stands out no matter where you put it. One of the things I like the most about this one is the weird summer new growth. You get these little like antenna prawns yeah. going on over top of it. Reminds me a little bit of what I like about something like Dr. Seuss. Gets kind of some of that funky variegation going on there. Very irregular shaped leaves. Yeah. A little bit more upright than some of the other Makawas. Really stands out to me. Fall colors can be that, what you think of with Makawa, with that blazing orange red, but also some hints of yellow in there on the variegated parts. Really stands out for me. Exceptional Japanese maple. And one we're gonna keep bringing, we're gonna keep putting this one stock, Catalina Yatsubusa. Definitely one that's great for growing in containers. This would be awesome sitting out on your deck or front porch where you can kind of enjoy that foliage up close. I love just that variegation on this. It's very strong, man. Each leaf is just really, really uh, kind of mutated in its shape, you know what I mean? It's just super interesting to look at and uh, it's great for any collection. No two leaves are kind of the same on, yeah. on, on Catalina Yatsubusa. Everything's intricate and different. Small foliage. Uh, I mean, I think it makes a great container plant. I, this is one I like to bring back up into the you know, the patio. Right. Get it back up where I can sit there on the, the rocking chair, check this one out. Man, it, it's, it's just something special about it. And it's something that's interesting for a photographer because every photo of you take of it's a little different too. Right. I love this plant. Definitely add one to your collection. These aren't going to last long, so get one ordered today. 
All right, y'all, we've got another lace leaf coming back. That, that does tend to sell out pretty quickly. It's been a minute since we've had Acer Palmatum Asayaki on the website. Really cool lace leaf. Uh, this one can have some yellow tones to it. It can have a bit of a purple border to it in the early spring. We find that early morning shade gives it some of its better yellow tones. Yeah, this is definitely one, you know, when you think of like a green lace leaf, and a lot of time people go with a Viridis waterfall, something like that. This gives you a little something extra, give you that little border to it. And yeah, I have seen some nice, like light yellow colors. I took some pictures of this during the spring and you, know, it, you can definitely tell it's got just a, a, a yellow hint to that green underneath. I'm a Star Wars nerd, so I'm thinking of Sokotano the lightsabers, but we got Asayaki here, really cool plant. Uh, this was introduced by our friend, Neil Ramsey, and uh, former president of the Conifer Society, real, real knowledgeable guy on plants, named this one down near Atlanta. Seems to be doing pretty well for heat tolerance. Uh, I'm a huge fan of how this one grows, though. It's another compact dwarf lace leaf that can really provide some unique colors there in the landscape. Absolutely, yeah, I've got one of these planted in my garden. I've got it in full sun here in zone 6B. It's doing really, really well, showing no signs of stress, and, and we've had pretty hot summer here. Oh, dry so, uh, now. Definitely a good, solid plant to be putting out your landscape, for sure. Awesome one, y'all. All right, th those do will sell out pretty quickly. It's been one that's been in high demand, so that that is one if you're after, I would check out quickly. I know we've had a lot of requests to get that one back in stock. All right, next up we got uh, Picea Abies Gold Finch. All right, this is a cool one, y'all. This is a dwarf mutation from Gold Drift. This was named by our friend Robert Fincham. You know, he's famous for so many different conifers. Uh, Bob Fincham's come up with a whole series of Finch-related right. uh, names to him. Gold Finch may be his best one. It's a great one. Uh, Gold Finch is more like four feet tall uh, by like three to four feet wide, small, compact habit to it. And just like Gold Drift, if you're getting some sun on this one, it'll get more yellow hits in there. Dude, this is a really cool conifer. Uh, I'm in that conifer mode right now in my garden, always looking for a dwarf conifer to add. Uh, this could go anywhere, man. I mean, this is, stays so small, you're not going to outgrow a space. And then, like you said, you get that beautiful golden color on top of that. Excellent, man. Great one for a container garden. I might have mentioned this one's going to work zones four through eight, but you want to protect it from the sun and some of the hotter zone eight. So if you're going into some of those higher heat areas, a little late day shade on this one's ideal. Really makes a showstopper though. I mean, who doesn't want a dwarf gold drift? I mean, Goldfinch kind of fits it perfectly. Love when the name lines up with Robert Fincham and Goldfinch, really right. cool combination there. Get ready for these to drop, Goldfinch. There we go. All right, from one friend's tree to another friend's tree. There we go. We got Benny Sukasa. This was named at Sukasa Maple Nursery in Japan by our friend Yanata Tanaka. This thing comes out in the spring, some really, really nice pink colors. Sometimes you get kind of a peachy red color in that too. So you get a lot of multicolor tones on this plant when it's leafing out, uh, depending on where you've got it in your garden. Some of those colors can be a little bit different. Uh, but I really love the spring interest of this. I mean, this is kind of like a lot of those Katsura types mm -hmm. that, that really come out in the spring and give you like a, almost a flower display out there. Now, Benny Shidori, which we will be offering eventually, gets a lot of hype in those bonsai groups. Everybody's always asking, we're going to have Benny Shidori back. I think it's overhyped, y'all. I mean, look at the colors you get on Benny Sukasa. Yeah. This one's going to give you pinks, some yellows, a lot of spring explosion. I think this one for a bonsai would work equally as well. Think of it kind of like in that Katsura to Sojo spring right. flowering interest where the, the foliage is the flower in the early spring. This one puts on some amazing shades of pink. Would be really nice if you're already a DeSojo bonsai grower to add some diversity right. to your bonsai in color. Benny Sukasa gives you a chance to have, you know, a Japanese maple with that tradition from Japan, named by an outstanding nursery in Japan and adding some unique color there in that aspect as well. Yeah, and the smaller leaf too also really lends to that bonsai. And then that new growth coming over top of that gives you a nice kind of a, a yellowish orange color with a little border to it. So, I mean, just that constant change in a bonsai pot would be really nice. I'd love to see one of these done. Oh, it works great whether now these are grafted. It works great whether you get it in the ground or you bonsai it. We always let people know these are grafted. My best suggestion for anybody, even bonsai experts, buy a grafted Japanese maple, get it in the ground, and yeah. then get constant material from that. You yeah. can air layer, you Absolutely. can do rooted cuttings. I think this one's gorgeous in the ground though as a full size specimen in any garden. And it's gonna give you something that's gonna, I mean, put this with your DeSojo, your Wayno yeah. Yamas, right. your, your uh, Katsuras. The colors are gonna be incredible in that early spring garden. You can really color your whole garden with those aspects. So if you're needing a good spring color maple, this is definitely the one right here. All right, we got some big boys here yeah. on the table. Man, these are huge sizes. What we got right here is we got Acer picked them, just the straight species here. 
I love the bat wing maples. They're so cool, man. The leaf shape on these are just amazing. Uh, and, and, and nice, strong growers as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, this one's going to get out there. out there quick. Yeah, these will grow over a foot to a foot and a half of growth a year. Uh, think of these like Acer Truncatum. They'll provide shade for the rest of your garden. You yeah. can get these out there. You can get some protection for other maples. You're going to get some dark red fall colors on this one. Acer picked them. It's going to work zones five through nine. Uh, similar to Japanese maples, but the straight species is very heat tolerant, so you can provide some shade for smaller plants with this one. Uh, and it gets out there quick. I mean, yeah. it does put on a lot of growth. Uh, Acer pictums are exceptionally heat tolerant, so it's going to do great even in full sun exposures in that zone 8. But excellent one to be adding to the landscape. And if you're into species maples, hey, some great sizes of Acer pictums. Absolutely, man. And, and I love that really dark green that this has. Mm -hmm. And then you get that summer new flush over top of that, which got a, like a nice light pink to it. Uh, really contrast within itself and always interesting. I love just the whole concept of the bat wing leaf. Uh, I've got several of those in my collection. So, I mean, to have the straight species, I think is a really cool way to kind of represent the species and then all the cultivars that follow that. And a great way to go through some seeds from this to look for future absolutely. cultivars. So. Yeah, absolutely. Check these out on Mr. Maple. They're huge sizes. They're probably gonna have to go in a medium box. Yeah. I mean, these are a grower and a shower. <laughs> Next up, we got Taki no Gawa, y'all. Woo, Taki no Gawa. I know all the Japonicum fans out there are just freaking out right now because we got Japonicums on the 10 at 10. We keep dropping them. We keep dropping them, man. I love the Acer Japonicum. We all know how awesome their fall color is. We can't talk about that enough because they're always the top performer out there in the garden. I mean, I, every fall I'm looking forward to, I, I go out to my garden, I'm looking at all my japonicums, I'm like, okay, this is about to get good when the fall's coming. And Taki no Gawa is no exception to that. Love this one. It's in that kind of medium-sized leaf shape for, for Acer japonicums. It's not the biggest leaf, it's not the smallest, kind of right in the middle. Reminds me a little bit of some of the trees I saw growing natively in Japan. Now, it's a distinct cultivar on its own, but I like that it has that aspect of like what I saw growing right. in the Japanese mountains. Cause it kind of has a little bit of that charm to it as well. And a lot of your photos you'll see of Japan mountainscapes, the Japonicums are what's providing that dramatic color change. It's like reds, yellows, and oranges right. all at the same time. And that's something you'll get with Taki no Gawa. Yeah, I, look, I like how this one has kind of a more of a rounded leaf, less divided lobes on that. So you, you kind of get this nice, full, rounded leaf. Uh, very, very nice uh, plant. This, this thing is definitely a top contender when it comes to the Japonicums. I mean, if you're like, man, I don't know which Japonicum to get, uh, this is definitely high on that list. Like you said, it kind of gives you that Japanese feel of right. what is natural there in Japan. Almost looks tropical, but you see them growing in the mountains. The fall colors, I mean, you can't even say it's, it's underrated for fall color yeah, and it's it, we hype the fall color but it's still, it's still you can't describe how great it is absolutely in the fall this is a uh, photographer's dream i love taking pictures of these in the fall get one of these and add them to your garden all right man we got a, another great lace leaf here on the table yes all right we got acer palmatum emma hey shout out to my niece emma she's awesome i always have to have trees named after all my niece is in the garden. I, I've got to name a few, apparently, because right. I don't have enough for every niece. I've been working on a Zoe. I've got a uh, an Emma. Uh, I got a Hannah in the garden, hey, and I need a Brooklyn. Go. So I'm going to have to name a Brooklyn. Then I'm going to have to name all my kids, too. But <laughs> Emma's near and dear to me. Uh, really cool plant and uh, beautiful, beautiful tree. This one's going to have some pink overlays in the early spring. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of does some what you like about Dr. Brown. It kind of just right. keeps changing. It definitely does kind of have this nice chocolate burgundy color when you get later in the season. Um, I love just, it has a really nice feathery feel to it with a lace leaf. Um, I love the structure these create. I mean, even at a young age, you can see that, I mean, it's already contorting and twisting and giving you a really nice structure out in the garden. I love the weeping cascading style Japanese maples. And this is uh, definitely a star of that. I think that's a great point and something we don't talk about enough. It almost has like a smaller Germain's gyration. Right. Like you get more of that contortedness yeah. going on in Emma. There's definitely a lot of unique branching, even on small plants. Yeah, definitely one to keep your eye out for. I mean, this is definitely one that you want to add to your collection. I mean, there's a lot of lace leaves out there. You're always looking for one that just sets itself apart a little bit. Again, we had Asiaka on here. Add this one, pair those two together. Oh, it'd be a killer colors. set, right? Oh, amazing one, great for the container garden or the landscape. Small weeping form, four to five feet tall, four to five feet wide, durable, colorful, everything to love about Acer Palmetto Memo. All right, moving on down the line. 
We got right, some Matt, low what grabs. Do we got? What do we got? All right, we got Acer Palmatum Jiro Shidari. Now, this is one of those classic Japanese maples from Japan. Uh, Tim and I got to go to Kobayashi Mamiji Inn and actually meet Jiro, uh, who the tree's named after. Elder statesman there of Kobayashi Mamiji Inn. Never felt cooler in my life. So we walk in this nursery. Uh, our friend, uh, Taka, is like, well, they're, they're not going to be friendly to you, so don't be offended. They've had Americans that didn't necessarily live up to their business deals. Right. Don't be offended. They've been burned. No one's going to like you here. But you're getting to go to a 300-year-old maple nursery, so don't be offended. Just be happy. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I got the deal, right? I go in there. I'm, I'm, you know, we present some gifts. And Jiro comes running off the porch and comes up to talk to us, and he just is so happy and nice. And finally, Taka's like, you know, he's translating for us, and Taka's like, why the heck do you like these guys? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, he's just baffled. He's never liked any Americans we brought here before. And Jiro says, I've been to their website and they have nice things to say about me. I like these guys. Never felt cooler in my life than when Jiro Kobayashi had said he'd been on Mr. Maple. I was like, man, I feel a little cooler. Yeah, he sounds he pretty epic, are. I'm man. feeling pretty cool. Uh, but Jiro Maple Nursery. Definitely, man. That is awesome, dude. But yeah, this is that classic like Ryusen style plant. I absolutely love those. They're very popular for the landscape for one big reason is, is they're always different in size and shape. I mean, you can you can create so many different uh, landscape designs with this plant. I mean, you can stake this up and mm. get it tall and let it weep down or let it cascade over the ground. I mean, there's so many different applications of this plant. That's why I think they're such a star player when right. it comes to landscaping because you can create all kinds of designs and shapes with this plant. Uh, we're still in Buckholtz week. Check out the massive one we're walking by at Buckholtz and Buckholtz Nursery. There is a gorgeous specimen. Dare I say it's probably 10 feet tall and 15 feet wide at this point. Now, one fun thing about Jiro Shidari is it is wider than Ryusin. So this one's naturally gonna be wider and more arching. So if you're looking for something like Ryusin, but you want it to have more of a classical giant lace leaf shape to it, mm. Jiro Shidari is gonna give you that. It tends to be a little faster growing than Naka Komodo Weepin. We originally thought they were the same plant, Upon further uh, investigation in Japan, it sounds like this was actually a seedling from Nakakomoto Weepin. Okay. So Nakakomoto Weepin in that lineage, and uh, the granddaddy of them all, Jiro Shidari, the grandparent of Ryusen, Ryusen, the daddy of things like Dragon right. Master and so oh, many man. more. So it's kind of a real cool lineage going on there. Uh, but Jiro Shidari, awesome plant. Shidari meaning Weepin, and Jiro again for Jiro Kobayashi, one of the most interesting people I ever got to meet. Absolutely, awesome plant. Definitely order one of these to your garden. All right, we got some big boys here at the end. We're bringing it back, y'all. Oh man, check this out, guys. So after upon further inventory, and we had this one about a month ago, we've got more. Uh, we're bringing it back, y'all. It's the Mystic Jewel. Mystic Jewel, I mean, what can I say? Like, I've, I've seen these down in the greenhouses for a while, and I'm always cruising through there, <laughs> taking some pictures. I'm going about this dark, this, this little <laughs> hidden secret for I'm like, man, I got to get my hands on one of these. These are so beautiful, man. I, I, it really does have a really nice, interesting uh, spring color. And then the new growth kind of follows that same suit. You get some nice purple blushes in right. there. It's a weird one. Like, it, it can be as lavender purple as you've ever seen. I've had some of them in the greenhouse be as yellow as you've ever seen, almost like hot blonde color, then going back to purple. Uh, really unique one. We're listing this one zone six through nine. The honest application is I've only grown this two seasons here, so it's a new one from uh, Europe that's patented. It hasn't been evaluated enough in America. We're not going to list it in zone five. We think because of its Acer Olivierinum heritage that we can identify in here, we're going to list it similarly to hot blonde, being zone six right, through nine. Right. But we really don't know is the honest answer. So you'll have to evaluate this one with us. Uh, we're excited to offer it here. Probably the second time it's ever been offered online. It was offered the first time from us as well. <laughs> we're bringing back that Mystic Jewel, y'all. Mystic Jewel, man. Definitely add one of these to the garden. I'm sitting here thinking, I've got a couple of, I've got two hot blondes in my garden. Maybe I need this one kind of right. somewhere over there by it. I think it'd be a nice. I think it's going to be an excellent pairing with our Heat Seeker series. Yeah. I mean, not one of our introductions. Right. But, but it kind of fits that mold. Fits yeah. into that, that color pattern. It brings something to hot sauce, hot tamale, and hot blonde. Uh, I'm just jealous I didn't get to name it something hot, <laughs> but uh, hot mystic jewel coming out today, an amazing tree, and I think it's a jewel you'll want to add to your collection. Definitely. Man, we hope you guys have enjoyed this 10 at 10. I know I'm pumped. I mean, there's several plants I'm eyeballing on here. Matt used to joke around and say, if I didn't sell Brian a plant on a 10 at 10, I didn't do my job. You got to so. restart it. Cut, <laughs> cut. Redo the whole thing. So I'm always, I, I can even talk myself into a maple. Corbin was giving me a hard time the other day about that. Like I was watching myself talk about a maple and I'm like, dang, he's right, man. Brian is right. I need to get that plant. So <laughs> I agree with that guy. <laughs>
All right, y'all, I hope you're enjoying Buckholtz Week. Stay tuned, there's even more to come. We keep airing the best content on that. Uh, so hashtag Buckholtz Week, help us promote it. Share our videos this week, all week. Get those videos out there. We've put a lot of time, effort, and money into creating this content. Flying Tim and Corbin and I out Ooh. there in peak spring color, uh, having a video crew edit these things, break them down. We've got drone footage. We've got gardens. It really has every aspect of a garden that's rarely seen. He rarely yeah. lets people in there unless you're there for wholesale. Maybe one of the only opportunities to ever see it. Definitely share these videos. Man, I'll tell you what, for the garden community, I mean, is there anything better than Buckholz Week? I mean, right. it don't get any better than that. I'm, I'm excited to see it, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Man, the best is yet to come. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.